Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in our Elasticsearch tutorial series. So in the previous video we have created a person document, we have uh, implemented all of the needed things for it to be indexed and in this video we are going to do something similar. So we are going to create a new document, we are going to um, end it up uh, in our index, so we are going to index it and we are going to be able to fetch it from the index. The only difference between this implementation uh, that we are going to do today and the one that we did in the previous video is the way how we do it. If we go to our person document, you can see that we use the um, annotation to document which index it belongs. We have uh, created some mappings directly with the annotations here and we also have applied settings using the annotation. That's something that we are not going to be doing now. So basically this is the same video as we had before except we are showing you a different way how to do it. So let's start. Um, let's create a new document here. Uh, let's call it vehicle and add two properties to it, an ID and a number. So here it is. We have our uh, vehicle object. It has two properties, ID and a number. And that's about it that we are going to add. Um, we are not going to be adding any of these uh, annotations. So we're going to do this a bit differently. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create the mappings for these fields. To do that, we are going to create a JSON file inside of the mappings folder and name it the same way as we're going to name our index, which will just be vehicle. So let's do that. So inside of our resources folder in the static folder, I've created a new one called mappings and inside of it, I've created the vehicles uh, JSON. Currently it's empty, so let's add some things to it. What we want to add is we want to add the mappings. Uh, for the vehicle document, for these two properties, we want to say uh, which type they are. So it's the same what we had for the person. We had the ID of type keyword and we had the name of type text. That's something that we want to do now, but we are just not using the annotations. So let's see how it will look like. And here it is. We have created a JSON object called uh, properties and inside of it, we have an ID object and we have a number object. And inside of that ID, we have the type. So this is indicates that the ID properties of type keyword and that the number of properties of type text. Perfect. So with that uh, being done, uh, we want to move on to the next one. And that would be actually um, a util class on how we can uh, load this uh, vehicle uh, JSON mappings. Um, so we need something that to, be able to, to be able to load the settings which we have here and also these mappings. So inside of our helper class, uh, so inside, sorry, inside of our package, uh, helper package, let's create a new uh, util class, call it something like, um, I don't know, utils or whatever, and add one method uh, to it that will enable us to load uh, these static files. And here it is. We have our uh, loaded string method to which we provide a path to a file that we want to load and we use the class path resource uh, to be able to load the file and then convert it to a string and return it. So nothing fancy is happening here. Okay, now that we have this, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a service that will be taking care of our indices. So that means that in the previous implementation, uh, we were using an annotation to create our index automatically on the startup. Now we have to do it manually because we are not using these annotations. Um, what we are going to do here is we are going to create a service and then we are going to uh, hook it up so that whenever our application is started, it checks if a certain index exists. And if it does, um, nothing will happen. If it does not, uh, it will create it. So uh, let's create a new service, call it something like index service and um, see how this all will look like. So here is our service and uh, this is what we have until now. Um, we have created a service inside of our service package, uh, annotated it with add service that Spring is able to pick it up and we have auto fire the rest high level client because we are going to need it. In addition, we have this at post construct annotation, which enables us that whenever our application is starting and once the service has been constructed uh, to execute this method automatically. And we also have a list of indices that we want to create. Currently, it's uh, just one. So let's see what we need to do here. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to load the settings and we want to load the mappings. 
And once we have them, um, we are going to be applying them to the index that we are going to create. Maybe for performance reasons, it would be better to first check if this index ex exists. And if it does, then we don't have to do anything, then we can return. So let's uh, implement that first. So here it is. Here's what we have up until now. We are iterating through our indices that we want to uh, try to create. And we are using our client to check if the index exists. What we here uh, are doing is we are using the indices uh, object and then we are calling the exist uh, method on it. And the important thing is this get index request. So this is a request to which you can add an array of indices that you want to check if they exist. And uh, this request options we are just sticking with the default. If the index ex exists, uh, we just continue. Otherwise, if it does not exist, we want to create it. So let's see how we can create one. And this is it. This is how it looks like. Um, this is what we have. First thing that we do is we load our settings. I'm doing that uh, above everything else. So above this for loop because yeah, um, I don't want to load it uh, because we will always be loading the same settings. So I just want to load it once. Then we try to load the mappings. If the mappings are not um, the same as the, so if they are not named the same as your index, then they will not be found. So we just log an error and continue. So you have to make sure that your mappings are the same, uh, have the same name as your index. For example, for us, uh, the name of the index is vehicle and the mapping is also vehicle.js. So the index name is what's important here. Once we have the settings and the mappings, we create this uh, index request with the index name and set the both of them and then use again our client to send this request and create our index. And that's basically everything. So um, this method will create our index for us and it will also um, handle if the index already exists, it won't recreate it. Okay, perfect. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a vehicle service that's able to um, create a vehicle, so index it, and that's also able to retrieve it from the index. So let's uh, take a look at how that looks like. So here it is what we have up until now. In our vehicle service, we are auto wiring the REST high level client and we have the save method. To the save method, we are passing in the vehicle object that we want to index. Actually, maybe this method could be renamed to index. Um, because we are trying to index the vehicle, not to save it. I mean, we are saving it technically, but yeah, you know what I mean. And then we are using the Jackson object mapper to um, convert this vehicle object to a string. So this is a JSON string. And then we are creating this um, index request, uh, which means it's a request that you want to say, yeah, yeah I want to index something. To it, you'd say to which index you want to go, in our case, vehicle, and you also set the ID and the source. And the source is this string, and the type of it is a JSON. So it's a JSON string, so that Elasticsearch knows about it. And, and as a return, a return when using the client and the index method, you get this index response, and we're just checking if the response is um, okay, so if we successfully have indexed the vehicle that we want to. So um, that's pretty much it uh, for indexing. It's uh, quite simple. Now let's take a look at how we can retrieve uh, something from our index. So let's see how we can uh, fetch this vehicle using the client. So um, here's our method. This is what we have. It's actually fairly simple. We are creating this uh, get request again with the index and the ID. And uh, we're using the client get to fetch this document field. So this is our response. And from the response, we can actually get it as a string, then use our mapper to read the value. So convert it to the vehicle class and then just return it. It's a really simple way to fetch it. So nothing complicated here. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to create a controller to be able to execute these two methods. It will be basically uh, same as we have for the person controller. So I can just copy it from here and then just uh, adjust some endpoints. And here it is. We have our vehicle controller where we are auto wiring the vehicle service. And we have this uh, two methods. One is for indexing and one is by to in order to find it by the ID. Um, so let's start our application and then jump to Postman and try to execute this request to see if everything works. So the application has started. First, let's verify that our index exists. Uh, let's go to uh, Chrome and just ex execute localhost 9200 slash 
uh, vehicle. And after this has been executed, we get something like this. And you can see that we have our vehicle index created. We have aliases, we have mappings, and uh, the same way as we did it. And we have our settings applied. So everything worked. So let's go to uh, Postman um, and uh, let's try to, um, yeah index a vehicle so let's go we have a local host 8080 slash api slash vehicle and inside of the body we have an id and a number id is one number is um, whatever let's say also one and actually let's change it to something else aabv and let's execute this so um, everything seems fine now let's uh, try to fetch this so let me just copy this um, new get request localhost 8080 slash api slash vehicle slash one because that's the id of our vehicle let's send it and here's our result we get the indexed vehicle if we try with something that doesn't exist like 33 and we get nothing and that's exactly what we expect so as you can see um our things work uh, we have some exception here uh yeah because we were searching for a um vehicle that doesn't exist so here in the vehicle service uh, this content is now so this is something that we can also check um, maybe we can actually copy this or so, mm -hmm. something like a uh, document fields uh, is source empty yeah that's perfect so if the source is empty um, then uh, we can just return null immediately we don't have to do anything fancy so perfect, as you can see, uh, everything works. So let's recap what we did. Uh, the first thing that we did is we created this uh, vehicle document, which is just a plain Java object with uh, two properties, IDs, uh, ID and a number, no annotation, because we want to do it like this on purpose. Then we created our mappings. So these are the properties and the, that we have, and the types are defined here also. The next thing that we do uh, is create this index service, which is uh, taking care of uh, our indices. So it's making sure that uh, they are created on startup and that they exist. And um, all of the settings and mappings are applied uh, also by this service, which is super nice of it. And the next thing that we do is create this vehicle service, which has the methods to um, index and fetch the um, vehicle um, entity that we are being that we are indexing uh, we are using this rest high level client which we created in the previous video um yeah pretty much that's everything that we did we have the controller and we have the util class so those are just uh, the spring stuff that we have uh util is for loading of our uh, settings and mappings and the vehicle controller is to provide us with the endpoints so as you can see, uh, it works exactly the same as we did it with the person. It's really up to you uh, which way you want to go. Do you want to use these uh, annotations or do you want to do it manually? I mean, there are advantages, I guess, to the annotations because if you would change the um, name names of the properties, for example, if you change this one to something else, the mappings will be updated. And uh, the other way around, uh, it would not happen because you would have to change the JSON also. You would also have to take care of that. So that would be everything for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, uh, do let me know. Write me a message in the comment and uh, let me know if you want to see something special about Elasticsearch. And if you like this kind of content, uh, like the video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next one.